Now I want to cover the subject of tumors. When examining a mass, one should pay attention to its reflectivity, its internal structure, and the amount of sound attenuation. Reflectivity of a mass is something between 0% up to 100%. 0% is that of the vitreous, while 100% is that of the initial spike of the A scale. In case of V-scan, zero is that of the vitreous, while the 100% is that of the or outer orbital tissue. So reflectivity can be in this range. Extremely low, low, medium, medium to high, and high. The greater the number of interfaces within a lesion, the higher its reflectivity. For example, if we have choroidal melanoma, which is formed of dense cells, then the reflectivity of the lesion is low. It should be something between 5 to 40 percent. In case of metastatic carcinoma, which is formed of areas of tumor cells, and areas of fibrous tissue, then the reflectivity is medium to high, between 60 to 80 percent, as in here. In cases of choroidal hemangioma, where we have blood spaces with septa of fibrous tissue in between, the reflectivity is very high. It's something between 95 up to 100 percent. So, knowing the reflectivity of a lesion, then we can figure out how much septa are within that lesion. Sometimes the reflectivity changes. In case of low reflectivity of choroidal melanoma, if there is hemorrhage or if there is engorgement of the blood vessel or if there is area of necrosis, the reflectivity will start to be high. What is the normal reflectivity of the choroid? The choroid is formed of small, medium, and large vessels. So if we have a pigmented lesion, we are not sure is it a nevus or is it a melanoma. If it's a nevus, then it's just pigmentation inside a normal choroid, then you should expect reflectivity to be high. While in case of malignant melanoma, which is formed of mass of cells, there is no interfaces in between, then the reflectivity should be low. So simply, if you have high reflectivity, then you have interfaces. If you have low reflectivity, then you don't have interfaces in the lesion. In case of choroidal melanoma, if there is invasion of the cells to the surrounding choroid, then we're going to have an area with where the reflectivity will be less and less. The normal choroid is highly refractile because it's being formed of different blood vessels, but here the mass of cells get a low reflectivity, and this will give us what we call a choroidal excavation. Retinoblastoma is formed of cells and some septa, so the reflectivity is low to medium. If there is calcification, then the reflectivity will be high. The second thing is the internal structure. The internal structure of a mass can be regular or can be irregular. A regular internal structure means that in the lesion area, the amplitude is of a uniform level or it's gradually smoothly decreased. On the other hand, an irregular internal structure means that the reflectivity can be high, then low, then high, then low, then high, and areas of high reflectivity and areas of low reflectivity. 
So we get areas of high spikes and areas of low spikes. Or in the same lesion, in one sector you get high spikes, in another sector you get medium or low spikes. In this example, we have a regular decrease in the spike. This is the regular internal structure. Again, steady spikes. This is the regular internal structure. But here we have low spikes, high spikes, low spikes. So this is a regular internal structure. The third point is sound attenuation. Sound attenuation occurs when a sound is scattered or reflected or absorbed. In general, we can see sound attenuation if we examine the globe through closed lids, especially if the lids are swollen. But we can see it again if there is extreme dense opacities or membranes, or if there is highly refractile structures like bone, calcification, or foreign body. In this example, this is osteoma with marked attenuation of the sound following that, that the area below, posterior to it will appear dark. We call it shadowing. Sound waves couldn't find its way to this area, so we don't have any information coming back from this area. In the A scan, you can see the lesion gets a very high reflectivity and mark it the attenuation of the sound that come very low. There is an angle called the angle kappa. It's the angle between the line joining the tops of the spikes form and the horizontal line. So angle kappa is large in case of market attenuation, and angle kappa is a small in case of minimal attenuation of the sound. So this is market attenuation, less attenuation, and here we have small attenuation. Sound attenuation is evaluated when the echo spikes are displayed at a medium reflectivity, either by increasing sense system sensitivity if the lesion reflectivity is low, or by decreasing system sensitivity if the lesion reflectivity is high. Now I want to go to the different intraocular tumors. Here we get a pigmented lesion. We are not sure is it a nevus or is it a melanoma. So if it's a nevus, then it's just pigmented cells in a normal choroid. Then the reflectivity is high and it has an internal, regular internal structure. But if it's a mass of cells with no septa in between, then the reflectivity will be low. This is the case of melanoma. Again, to differentiate between choroidal melanoma, metastatic carcinoma, and choroidal hemangioma. First, the location. Melanoma can be anterior or posterior to the equator. On the other hand, metastatic carcinoma and choroidal hemangioma are usually posterior to the equator. Then the shape of the lesion, melanoma is known to be a mushroom shaped. It's thought in the deep layers of the choroid, then when it finds its way through the Bruch's membrane, you get this appearance of a narrow part and a wider part. On the other hand, metastatic carcinoma is a flat tumor with irregular contour or then shows a central excavation. In case of choroidal hemangioma, it can be either a localized area or a diffuse increased thickness of the choroid, as in case of Serge Weber syndrome. In choroidal melanoma, we can see hollowing or excavation at the base where the cells are going to invade the choroid 
while in case of choroidal hemangioma, it's characterized by ab absence of growth. The internal refractivity, as we said, can be low to medium in the melanoma, medium to high in the metastatic carcinoma, and is high in the choroidal hemangioma. Internal structure is regular, some, to some extent irregular in case of metastatic carcinoma. If we come to retinoblastoma, retinoblastoma can be unilateral or bilateral, can be one focus or multifocus. It is characterized by calcification. and the calcification can produce shadowing. Sometimes we can see seedlings of the tumor along the posterior hyaloid face. Again, you can see here high reflectivity because of calcification, and the A vector, it is very high spikes. The second character in retinoblastoma, that the eye globe is of a normal size or large. This is important to differentiate the condition where the other conditions that produce a similar lesion that occur in short eyes. These are the retinopathy of prematurity and the persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Retinopathy of prematurity, commonly it is bilateral, while Persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous it's unilateral. The second differential diagnosis is Coates disease. Coates disease usually it's unilateral and usually it doesn't have calcification unless there is chronic degeneration on top. This shows the average size of the the axial length of the eye at different edges. To the end of this presentation.